True Diagrams, Probability Part 2. We're going to look at balls in the bag problems with two picks. That leads naturally onto the idea of a tree diagram to represent all the outcomes of that problem visually. And then we'll look at using a tree diagram to solve a without replacement problem. Two picks from the bag. You've got f five red balls, three white balls, and you replace the first ball and pick a second. You want to know the probability of picking one ball of each colour, but you don't care what order they come in. And remember, we're replacing the first ball. One of each means either a red and a white, or a white and a red. Notice how I've capitalised the ands and the ors. So the probability of one of each is equal to the probability of a red and a white, plus the probability of a white and a red. The two outcomes, red and white, white and red, are mutually exclusive, so we can add the probabilities. They're mutually exclusive because the moment you pick a red ball out of the bag, you've excluded the possibility of picking a white ball first. That leads to the, the calculation that the probability of one of each is equal to the probability of a red one first times the probability of a white one second, because those are independent events and they multiply, plus the probability of a white one first times the probability of the red one second. Again, those two are independent events we add the two possible ways of achieving the outcome because they're mutually exclusive. Now there's a much easier way of keeping track of the calculation using a visual aid called a tree diagram. You also get questions on the exam paper involving filling in tree diagrams so you have to know how to draw them even if you find the other way easier. Trees have branches so we represent the first pick as a branch leading to a red outcome and a white outcome. Against each twig on the branch, we draw the probabilities associated with those outcomes. So the probability of getting a red one is 5 eighths, and the probability of getting a white one is 3 eighths. Now, the red outcome itself branches to show you the outcomes of the second pick. And it just so happens the probabilities are the same. Notice how the probabilities on each of the branches adds up to 8 eighths, or 1. That's a rule of tree diagrams. Something has to happen when you pick a ball out the bag. Going back in time to the beginning and picking the white outcome first, that also has a branch that leads to the possible second outcomes. And again, the probabilities are the same because we're putting the first ball back. So now we've got a tree diagram labelled with probabilities on the twigs. The probabilities add up to one on each branch. And it just so happens that the probability of the outcome red and red can be obtained by multiplying the probabilities along the tree diagram the path that leads to the red and red outcome. So that's 5 eighths times 5 eighths is, 50, is 25 60 fourths. In the same way, the probability of the red and white outcome is gained by multiplying 5 eighths times 3 eighths to give 15 60 fourths. The probability of the white and red outcome is gained by multiplying the 3 eighths times the 5 eighths to give the 15 60 fourths. And the probability of the white and white outcome is given by 3 eighths times 3 eighths, the, the path through the tree diagram that leads to the two white outcomes. You'll notice that all the fractions over 64 do actually add up to 64 over 64. This tree diagram shows a complete picture of all the possible outcomes of our two-pick experiment. Now for filling in a diagram like that on a GCSE paper you typically get you know three three marks or something like that. It would depend on how much they left out of the diagram. They would draw the basic diagram for you. Now, suppose we want to use this diagram to answer the original question, what's the probability of getting one ball of each colour? We can see that there are two paths that give rise to the two desired outcomes. One desired outcome is red first and white second. The other desired outcome is white first and red second. Both of those meet the condition we're trying to find out the probability of. Because those two paths are mutually exclusive, if you pick one path you can't pick the other path, we can add up the probabilities associated with each of those paths, and that leads to the same sum we had in the last section, 15 60 fourths plus 15 60 fourths. That's equal to 30 60 fourths, and that cancels down at the end to 15 30 seconds. So that's how you can use a tree diagram to see visually which paths add up to give you the outcome, the outcome that you're trying to find. We can summarize three rules of tree diagrams. The probabilities on each branch add to one, you multiply the probabilities along the path to get, obtain the probability of that particular outcome. 
and different paths are mutually exclusive, so you can add up the probabilities associated with them. Here's a without replacement problem. Again, we have a red and a white. Again, we have five red balls and three white balls. But now on the first pick, instead of putting the ball back in the bag and shaking it again, we're going to leave the ball out. So the red outcome branches to the second pick outcomes consistent with having a red ball first. Now, what's the probability of getting a red ball on the second pick if you've already had one on the first pick and haven't put it back? Well, the answer is there's going to be one less ball and there's going to be one less red ball, so it's four sevenths. By the first rule of tree diagrams, the white probability must be three sevenths, and it is anyway because there are three white balls left. Going back in time to the beginning and picking the white outcome leads to our second branch given the white outcome first. Now on this occasion, what's the probability of getting a red ball? Well, there are still five red balls left, but now there are seven balls, so it's five sevenths. By the first rule of tree diagrams, that gives two sevenths for the other side of the tree. Now we can work out the probability associated with each of the outcomes in the same way we did for the first tree diagram. And there they all are. Again, they should add up to 56 out of 56. By picking the appropriate outcomes consistent with what the question's asking and adding them, we can find out the answers to the questions in a very simple and straightforward way. Here's a problem for you to do which is actually a bit harder and the solution is available after I've stated the problem. So you may need to pause the video to give yourself time to work out the solution. You've got nine blue balls, seven green balls. It's a two pick experiment and there's no replacement. So the tree diagram pattern is going to look something like that. Now the question is What's the probability of getting at least one green ball? Don't care what order it comes in, but I want at least one green ball. Now you might want to pause because the next slide I'm going to build up the solution. Okay, here comes the solution. We've got nine blues, seven greens, and we want the probability of at least one green. Let's analyze that statement a bit. Oh, let's label the tree diagram first. These are my probabilities on the tree diagram. Just picking the blue-green route, I got 9 sixteenths plus 7 fifteenths. So the probability of a blue then a green is 9 sixteenths times 7 fifteenths in the usual way. Now let's analyse my at least one green. At least one green means the probability of a blue then a green plus the probability of a green then a blue plus the probability of a green and a green because at least one green is consistent with having two greens. So that's the blue-green path, the green-blue path, and the green-green path. If I work out the probabilities associated with each of those paths by multiplying the probabilities along the path, I end up with a sum like this. Quite a big fraction, this one. But it cancels down to 7 tenths. Now, there is another way of solving that question. I can say the probability of getting at least one green one is 1 minus the probability of getting two blue ones, because that's the only outcome which doesn't have a green ball. So I can then save myself a bit of work by working out that's 1 minus 72 over 240 by multiplying the 9 sixteenths by the 8 fifteenths. And then I can subtract the 3 tenths that that cancels down to from 1, and that gives me 7 tenths for the desired outcome. So sometimes there are quick ways of finding the outcomes depending on how many outcomes are left. Now, there is a worksheet to download with plenty of tree diagram questions on, and that's me finished.